Here's a few seemingly loose threads in the Bible. In Romans 11 and Philippians 3, Paul mentions that he's from the tribe of Benjamin. Back in the early chapters of Acts, we find out that he was originally called Saul before his conversion. It's only after his encounter with Sergius Paulus in chapter 13 that he decides to go by Paul. And then 1 Samuel 9, 1 through 2 notes that the first king of Israel was also named Saul, who was from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, it's not exactly a slam dunk, but what if Paul, yep, the Saul turned Paul guy, was named after that famous first king of Israel? Saul was pretty significant in their tribe's history. Some here might raise an eyebrow, saying that naming a kid after him might be a bit iffy considering his not so great history with God and all the drama with King David. But Paul being previously named Saul and being from the tribe of Benjamin suggests that our perception of Saul as an unequivocal bad guy might not be entirely on the mark. Consider that after Saul's passing in 2 Samuel 123, King David spoke very highly of him, praising Saul as a formidable warrior, likening him to an eagle and a lion. It's plausible that later descendants of Benjamin took pride in their heritage by naming their kid Saul. It's pretty much common knowledge among those who acquainted with the New Testament that Paul was formerly known as Saul. It's a detail that's widely known and it's almost just taken for granted. Yet here's the kicker. Acts, our main source for this information, Luke, he never brings up Saul, Paul's tribe. And curiously, in all of Paul's letters, there's no mention of his former name being Saul. It's a seamless fit of a number of different puzzle pieces from separate sources. Also, the absence of any reference to Paul's tribe in Acts, despite it being an easy inclusion, makes it very unlikely that the author of Acts made up Paul's earlier name based on brief mentions in his letters. This is a classic example of an undesigned coincidence, and it's a marker that Acts is rooted in eyewitness testimony. Imagine if you have a massive box of jigsaw puzzle pieces, each taken randomly from different puzzles. If there were only a few pieces that coincidentally fit together, we might be tempted to think that it's just random chance. However, when a large number of pieces fit, forming clusters, the idea that it's all just a coincidence becomes ridiculous. To truly grasp the strength of the argument from undesigned coincidences, we need to patiently go through multiple examples. But the picture that emerges from this effort will more than reward us for the time and study that we put into the project. And I'll be going through plenty more examples in future episodes, so be sure to subscribe.